I'm going to speak to someone very special today whose CV in the professional game is absolutely is amazing and obviously he can get the opportunity to talk about himself as well and obviously introduce yourself as well so that people know as well who you are so Hello everyone, my name is Leroy Lita, former professional footballer <laughs> Let's talk about your career and everything. Yeah. You started off at Chelsea. How how was that like? Looking back now, it was not not a great club to be at. Mm. But obviously, if you got Chelsea on your CV, you're yeah. gonna get some mm. opportunities because yeah. mm. they've got reputation in the club. But while I was there, I worked really hard and I tried to just get mm. you know make it make it at Chelsea. It was doing really well, I thought, because I was being pushed to train yeah. with the mm. first team and reserves at mm. school school age, I was mm. 15 or something mm. like that. And um, I thought I was doing really well, but yeah. they, they wasn't really, my, their focus was on other players to push, mm. Mm. but I was the one standing out and um, I did well in my last season mm. when I got released. Mm. Uh, I got pulled in on the, after training on the Thursday night in the, um, I think we trained at Canterbury mm. University. Mm. And they told me, um, yeah, we're not taking on, we think you're too small. Mm, <laughs> and mm. I just laughed because one of my strongest attributes was mm. in the air. I've played football for a very long time and sometimes they do come up with, because I was very small, mm. and I'm, but I'm a very technical player. Yeah. And you know before, when they was growing up, they say about the English game, like, yeah. oh, you're too small to play midfield. Yeah. You're too small to do this, you're too small to do that. Yeah. How did that make you feel? Like, did he did he discourage you from playing the game? I didn't let it get to me because mm -hmm. I was very good in there. Yeah, so, yeah. And that's one of my main strengths. Mm -hmm. And um, so I never saw it as a problem for me. But I get how mm -hmm. it can dis dishearten some people, mm -hmm. young people especially, because you don't know how big you're going to be. <laughs> that is, you're just mm -hmm. you're just growing up, mm -hmm. and you're just getting on with your life and trying to eat the right food. And, yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, some people grow late. Some people are really big when they're young. Mm -hmm. You never know. It's one. It's a bit unfair because. Mm -hmm. If someone's technical, you should work with them on that even more. So 100%. they don't have to be big. And you know what? The, f the good thing as well that I like these days as well is that because since Pep Guardiola has come in, the game has changed yeah. mentally. Because before it was about you being physical, yeah. strong, yeah. but now it's about actually being athletic. Yeah. And that's the best way to, to play football. Do you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And if you've got the ball, you don't need to be. Mm. <laughs> if the team's got the ball, can keep mm. the ball. You don't. No one's gonna. I'm gonna try and bully you. In terms of the mental aspect of the game. How do you cope with that? Do you do they have people like a coach that help with that mental side of the game, or do they just kind of leave you towards this is the mental side of the game, and you just kind of I think deal now, with it? now there is, but while I was playing, I remember no. There's, no there's mm. a, I think we had a psychologist once when I was at Bristol City. We used to wow. take us for shooting drills. It, it took a bit of good tips on him and that, but. Mainly, you, you get on when you come and train, and you do, your, do your extras and mm. go home. So it's not, I think now if you speak to the current players, there's mm. someone there mm. helping him on that side. But I think it's not one, it's stuff mm. you, you just have to grow within you. Personally, I think anyway. Yeah, yeah. So it's not something that can be taught. You either have it or you don't because yeah. football is not very patient for that. Yeah. <laughs> you play for so many clubs. Yeah. 17 clubs in total. Oh, wow. I can't that. 17 clubs in total. And I was like, wow. Yeah. Out of those clubs, which one did you enjoy the most playing for? Football wise, I enjoyed playing under. For Middlesbrough under Tony Mowbray. Tony Mowbray. Oh, Tony, and he did for West Brom as well. He, Tony Mowbray. He's Mowbray as well. Yeah. Celtic as well. Yeah. Bit, and, um, mm. His manager Blackburn. Mm. Um, yeah, I enjoyed it football wise, mm. but as a club as a whole, to be a, be somewhere like Swansea, but I didn't play that much. Then, mm. But the environment was very good. Literally, there's not one person I could think of at the top of my head that if you can get on with it. Everyone mm. went. It's a mm. proper club. Mm. They looked after all their players and. Um, yeah, my most success was probably Reading, mm. so where everyone remembers me for. As me, personally, you enjoy different, mm. you know, like Middlesbrough. I love playing. Mm. I didn't like living near That's there. That's it. Because I was there. even going to get onto that about that plane, because obviously you mm. must have earned millions of mm. pounds. Yeah. So much millions, yeah. which only God knows where I'll be able to see <laughs> that kind of money. But You might do, mate. <laughs> everyone wants to become footballer these days. Yeah, but for the where, wrong reasons. 
because obviously everyone's seeing that oh you're earning this amount of money you're earning that amount of money but when i was growing up I played everywhere yeah. even for plastic trophies because you love it because i love it mm. but these days now how important to instill that love of the game rather than the the money monetary part of it well we can't control that because mm. it's just put out there for everybody to see mm. what players are earning what, mm. what they think they're earning mm. um but when i talk to young young, young guys and they you see their parents you see the you just seeing the dollar sign. Yeah, that's what it is. Come on, man. you got to try harder, baby. <laughs> that's but that what kid's is. probably not enjoying it. Mm, so I mean, so that's you can't. What it was. I think that's where you, you take away the joy from. You're pushing mm. your young boy or girl, yeah, whatever, yeah. to play football because of the money. Like, most of the time, you don't make it. Parents are putting so much pressure, like from even young age, they chuck children into academy. Man, I've never played in academy. How is that academy kind of environment? I think like, it teaches you football and nothing else. The academy teaches you just football, nothing else about life. Mm. Um, so I get what the players who come through later, who've had to go down low, who come back up. I mm. think their mentality, they're mentally stronger because they know both sides. Mm. I think when you've gone through academy and you've made it all the way through, you don't really learn nothing much else apart from football. But then again, you're getting good quality training. Sometimes <laughs> you're getting quality coaching and um, th things like that on a regular basis. Wow. That gives you an advantage to a certain point. That's about it. But then it's the mental side of it. Mm. How strong you are, how much you want to achieve your goals. Mm. Yeah, so you can't look. The academy don't teach you, yeah. that's something that you have to have within yourself. I'm talking about your Reading one, because obviously, like I said, that's the one everyone remembers you yeah. And I'll be honest with you as well, back in 2007, that's the one that sticks into my mind, because I think that's the time you really came on First into the in, the in the Premier League. And, and for Reading that time, it's a big thing. And how was that like playing in the Premier League? Like, because you must have played with like amazing players like yeah but you don't think like that you're, mm. you're competing no if you look back now I and mean, then you're like right how quality when you hear people talk about them it's different for me because mm. it's like when people compare Joe and Lampard and Scholes you don't see them like Scholes is the best out of all of them and then they show you stats of that. appearances and goals and assists yeah but Darren Bent has more goals than Van Nistelrooy mm. Van Nistelrooy was the better player wow. <laughs> so he has more prem goals than Van Nistelrooy, mm. but we all know who's better. So, and the, it's just when people talk, and then I, I listen, um, but I'm like, it's not like that because mm. you see people from outside don't see or understand the ins and outs. And um, when you're in there, you're competing. You're not really focused on who you're playing. You don't go out in the tunnel and you're like, oh my god, there's Gerard. There's Gerard. You don't, you don't do that. You I'm don't do that. Yeah. So it's a different mindset, and I think uh, people. You play that understand exactly what I mean by that. Mm -hmm. Myself, I my dream was just to be in them big stadiums and things. That, that was my drive. Mm -hmm. I want to want to hear that noise and when you mm -hmm. score a goal, there's no feeling like it. In terms of that that drive and that ambition, do you think it's a bit lost in the game at this moment? Because obviously you gave that example of that Middlesbrough mm -hmm. example. People these days now they've lost that drive. I just want to play football. Like yeah, I, I don't was, hear much. Mm, I don't hear like, much. Because if I if I was to make as a footballer now, if you put me in League One, I would be happy yeah, to yeah, play. Yeah, yeah. If you put me in Championship, well, or, would you be happy? Because you'd be getting a wage. Or <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't try it. Nobody in so many clubs. But then that, who do you think was the best player you've ever played with? Most talented player I've ever seen. Uh, by far, Everyone keeps saying that, you know. Fergus Ferguson, I remember he pulled me and Wazza over one day and said, look at this kid, he's the best kid, better than you, Wayne, when you were a kid, better than Rio, better than Ryan Giggs when you when he was a kid. This is the best kid you'll ever see. And he was just, he used to take liberties with players in training. Even the first team, he come over as a 16-year-old and he should just take liberties, play one touch, could play two touch, could take, go, weave his way through team. They're you not know lying to you. Everyone keeps saying The that. most talented footballer wow. I've seen or been at a club with and played alongside is with Omar. That's that's my because the guy could do everything. He can dribble, he can pass, he can beat players. Wow. You know what I mean? He's, he's you know what I mean. He's got a great vision as well. He understands the game. It's great wow. touch. Wow. Nah, he's, he's the most talented player I've seen mm. and played alongside. Wow. Well, overall. When did you play alongside him? Birmingham. Birmingham. Wow. Birmingham, Birmingham City. Yeah, yeah. I remember he went on loan. I went, but I went on. I went on loan. Mm. And the first training session. I couldn't believe my eyes and I was, after the training wow. session I said, what team are you alone from? Because <laughs> I knew it wasn't a Birmingham player. Yeah. And he, he said, said you he said, he said, he said, said, yeah. I know why. I said, I understand. He's talking about stats. Because yeah. these days, it feels as if people are not watching football 
they're watching stats yeah. and you get average players, players that well because they've got, got stats they've got 98 percent pass rate yeah, yeah, yeah but the pass is so a, how much to the left back and right back <laughs> <laughs> so how much you think of the game has changed then where people don't look at players anymore they look at the stats of um you know we're never going to change it that's how people are now mm. people look at them things like, mm. like I watch football, I watch the game mm. and first thing I always look at the players in different positions, I always like defenders now, mm. everyone says mm. when they talk about defender, oh, can he play? He's a defender, can he defend us <laughs> is the question first that like, you should mm. be asking. But How yeah. hard is it to make it as a professional football player? It's tough, you have to give up your whole life and, mm. uh, and not your whole life but uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. dedicate your life shall I say mm. to it. All right, cause it's, but, the rewards are amazing. You right. just focus and you know, you love it and you, I know you you still, people, people get in, injuries and stuff like mm. that, but you still keep going. The medical staff are amazing. Yeah, Some of the injuries we get now, 20, 30 years ago, you get mm. them, your career's done. As players, you're an asset to the team. Mm. So obviously they want their best players to always be out of the yeah. field. Mm. I've been at clubs where when you're injured, not, I've not, thank God I've not had many mm. serious injuries. Well, when, I'm, when a player's injured, the manager don't even talk to them. What? You're no good to them, are they? Wow. They're injured. Wow! Wow! <laughs> wow! That is. Some managers, if you're in a medical room, they are, they're not interested in what's wow. going on. Just let. When is he back? Oh, four weeks. All right. Speak to him four wow. weeks. Now. Things like that. that wow! That's, that, that's the harsh reality. Yeah, it's, it's the truth. It's the truth. Wow! But that is mental. That's why players always try and get back as quick as they want. Wow! as quick as they can so oh, the challenge is as a, as a football player for me obviously football players also have levels one other thing he can't just do whatever he wants to no. do he has to there are certain things he can't do uh, what are the challenges for you or, or footballers in general when I wasn't at football mm. I was with my friends I ain't gonna lie we did well we won it not to, <laughs> yeah, yeah, 100%. Not to, not to hurt anyone mm. anything like I enjoyed my time with my friends. I remember Steve Koppel said to me one time. Steve Koppel, wow. He said to when me, you, when, you, you, when you're out, just imagine there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a camera on your shoulder every time. I said, I know that. If you live like that, you could be miserable. You could be miserable. So I tried my, I, I didn't know, I never hurt anyone. I tried my best like, just to try and do normal things. I remember things. Steve Koppel for a role, man. Yeah, legend yeah. manager, man. He's a good legend, man. Wow, wow. Good, good man as well. Yeah, so yeah. It's just, you know, things are outside, you have to change, and there's mm. certain places you can't go. Obviously, at a certain time, your night before a game, I think two days, yeah. even two days before a game, yeah. I wouldn't even walk, waste your time because someone will see you and they'll get back mm. to your club or something like that. Just like, mm. it's not hard. Um, it depends, you have good people around you, you'll be mm. fine, you know. You're still shocked about the, uh, when you get injured, you don't get. Yeah, some managers, wow. right? some managers yeah. are only good. And some clubs, if they make it, when, some, when you're injured, they do, you're injured, you're already pissed off. You're yeah, injured. yeah, obviously. You're, you're, they make you come in earlier <laughs> than everyone else to get you treated so that you can get out for the players who are going to train to get them ready and oh, with God. their strappings. Mentally. And all. Yeah, you know so how that, mad that, that things mentally like is? That, things like that, I don't think that helps players at all. Another question I want to ask you is, let's say, for example, they've developed players in the academy and once they've developed them, they don't give you chances anymore. They just go out there, buy 56 million pound players. Do yeah. you think the coaching in the modern game, do you think is lost now? At do you that think level. At, at Premier League <laughs> level. Yeah, wow. because they can just, they can go and buy something ready or someone mm. ready for that position already. Yeah. Uh, they might get it wrong there and just do it again. It's tougher yeah. because there's a lot more money involved. Mm. Where, where they try to put the, you know, the fair play. Fair, yeah. nah, it's yeah. not, it's not gonna, nothing's going to change. It's, that's not going to help anything because mm. these teams are still spending 15 million on left backs. And you only heard of, the, heard of left backs and right backs. 15 million, I, I want to see 40 goals a season or something. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, um, which has gone out a little bit mm. when they get to her, but you could, they could still have a career, but it's, it's how they are mentally after mm. that. Mm. Because if you were 18 and you team, two of the right backs are injured and you're right back. You must be alright. Yeah, it wasn't. Yeah, but but then, then they, they go by, they go um, by. So and so have just bid in 60 million for us. <laughs> oh, so no, that must be hard. So, yeah, yeah that, 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 I think that's, that, that needs to stop. Because mm. um, there's a lot of talent that goes to waste. I played out away from England. Yeah. How important is it for people to go away from England? That's very important. Um, and why, why would you say that's very important? Very important. Because the other, I think, for instance, Greece. 
I wouldn't advise anyone to go there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why? Thailand is really, Why? really, oh, good grace. It's yeah. Too too much corruption there. Wow. Yeah, so it's it's a bigger job. Yeah. Me and you can't go over there and change anything like that. <laughs> Trust me. Yeah. They are the corrupt. Yeah. People who get not getting opportunities here mm. in England, yeah. or Spain, wherever. Try abroad. You know what mm. I mean? Because they they're, yeah. they're open to learn because mm. their their Premier League is only maybe twenty five years old. So they're way behind, mm. but they give you everything you need mm. to go and coach and make improve players. Yeah. Yeah. But their time and talent is so relaxed. They don't do pre-season. Yeah, yeah. Pre-season, any hard run session, no, you, they don't you do. lose the players. <laughs> <laughs> but they're fit anyway because mm. they, they don't need as much. Mm. So pace like that where football's pretty young. Mm. You know what I mean? You never know. Keep keep applying for these things. Keep, yeah, keep yeah. going in the internet. We've got, we got access to the internet. Mm. You know? I think people are just a bit scared to leave their comfort yeah, zone, and they world, just wanna. If you want, if you want to achieve things, you're gonna have to at some mm, point. You know what I mean? Yeah, I had to, I had to do that. At 16 years old, and to move, move away to Bristol. I know sending down the road to Bristol, but yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta do that sometimes. I mean, if you want to push a coach, you go there and do a mm. good job. You never know. You end up a national team manager. Yeah, yeah you never know. <laughs> you know, what I mean? you never know. The pleasure of having a having a chat. There are things that me, probably me, and a lot of other people that watches football probably won't get access to it unless you're in there. Yeah. So and the thing with social media and stuff mm. like that, people are reaching out to these people and they're coming back to yeah. you know, I think it's good that you do that it's because the papers don't tell you mm, mm. they don't tell mm. you what the truth a yeah. lot of the time. So mm. it's good that players who ex players and current players they talk to people it, it'll help it'll help because it's coming direct from them 100%. and not someone writing down and then printing a story mm, mm. and obviously someone like myself that's passionate about it yeah, yeah i know you are you, are, you love it no? yeah <laughs> shout out and please subscribe to diaries of mr cv oh perfect but well, his diary of mr cv well, diary perfect. Of mr. Hey. CV.